going to extremes. Out west, the leftovers from Hurricane Dolores bring dangerous lightning, record-breaking rains, and flash flooding, while the east coast prepares for a scorcher today. Temperatures predicted to hit triple digits in some places, with severe storms possible here as well. Our top story, though, this morning is that nasty weather from coast to coast. It is extreme heat here in the east. Flooding rains out west. Dylan, uh, what's the latest for everyone on this Sunday? Well, there will be two more days of rain out in the southwest. In Phoenix yesterday, we saw just some wild storms move through that produced a rapid amount of rain that led to this flash flooding. It swept away cars. It swept away homes. Look at that one about to crash into that bridge there. We saw this type of situation because the monsoonal moisture is in place and we're pumping in some extra moisture from a remnants of a tropical system out over the Pacific. Now, in California, we saw just crazy thunderstorms that actually closed the beach. Santa Monica Pier saw wild lightning with these storms. They also uh, triggered the chance of fires to spread. You know, when you have a lot of lightning, but you don't have all that much rain, the conditions are very dry. And yesterday in Los Angeles, we picked up 0.38 inches of rain. That is a record for the day. It is a record for the entire month of July. We do have uh, the chance for the next two days of more rain, more thunderstorms in California and through the desert southwest. That could lead to more flash flooding. We also have an area of high pressure. So not only are we looking at a lot of heat, but it's becoming more and more expansive. Boston is yet to hit 90 degrees yet this summer. We should hit it today, so heat watches and warnings and advisories are in effect. Temperatures not only will be in the 90s, but it'll feel like it's closer to 100 degrees because of the humidity. But I also want to point out, just four days ago, the final bit of snow up in Boston and that giant snow pile finally melted away. Wow. Only just four now? days ago? Just, just now. Oh, wow. yes. Just in time. I don't want to think about it. I know, right? <laughs> Let's get to our top story, though, this morning. A major interstate in Southern California closed this morning after part of that roadway washed away. NBC's Gotti Schwartz has the latest. Gotti, good morning to you. Good morning, Matt. A wild weekend for weather extremes. After a crippling drought, the area is now seeing historic rainfall that has brought flash flooding, washing away bridges and cars and damaging homes. A much needed heavy rain across Southern California turned dangerous on Sunday. Bridge collapse. Eastbound 10, post mile 102. At, At least one driver was trapped after the downpour caused a 30 foot section of the 10 freeway to collapse just east of Palm Springs. Now officials have shut down part of the interstate until they can fully assess the damage. With winds near 60 miles an hour, the thunderstorm dropped an estimated inch of rain every hour. The storm led to mudslides and flooded roadways, with several cars getting stranded in Orange County, California. Fire officials who rescued residents from their flooded homes across the southern part of the state say this is some of the heaviest rain they have ever seen. I've uh, worked here for almost 17 years and I've seen that Alvarado Creek fill up, but never to the point where it got this high and coming all over the road and almost into the trail parks. The weather in this region was so unusual that the Los Angeles Angels were rained out at home for the first time in 20 years. Delays also hit their National League neighbors in San Diego, where the city broke records for the most rainfall ever in July. In a bit of good news, the rare summer storm also allowed firefighters to contain 60% of a wildfire that swept across a California state highway over the weekend. But to the east in Arizona, the severe flooding also hit hard, leaving fields of debris. As a community, this is not the first time it's happened, but it's the worst time that I've seen in 26 years. And with this much needed rain, lightning strikes have followed. Over the weekend, concerns closed 70 miles of beaches. Lightning struck a plane and forced it to make an emergency landing at LAX. And a person was struck by lightning in California City. Matt? All right, Gotti Schwartz. Gotti, thank you very much. How are things looking today? Well, no, not much better, a little bit better. And this is all due to what we see as it could be a record-breaking El Nino, the warming of the waters in the Pacific. So we've had this impact from El Nino already. This is the remnants of Dolores, and all that moisture streamed up into Southern California and uh, the Southwest, causing big problems. The problem here is water temperatures, the sea surface temperatures, three to six degrees above normal and they're only getting warmer. This is favorable for tropical development. We've already seen record amounts of tropical development this year so far. It's an active Pacific hurricane season. We're looking for more later this week, something developing off the Mexico coast. We expect another 12 million people at risk for severe thunderstorms with thunderstorms and uh, big flash flood watches, one to two inches of rainfall per hour. The other big story, the heat and humidity, dangerous heat. 51 million people under some sort of heat.
heat watch or advisory or warning from New York City out to Oklahoma City. Temperatures, even though in the 90s, will feel like well over 100, both today, right on into tomorrow, from the mid-Atlantic coast, Gulf Coast, on into the southeast. And this heat in the south is going to stay entrenched.